I am here for the next step in my start to finish on the watercolor garden, watercolor flowers journals. Um, so when last we spoke, <laughs> we had gotten to this point. So we put together our signatures. Um, not the most, you know, sexy part of putting together a journal, but it lays the foundation. It lays the, the foundation for uh, our book. So I've got my signatures over here. Uh, for that for the the pastel the bright colored one and then I've got my signatures over here that we put together for the vintage one right so we've got two sets of five signatures with give or take six to eight pages in each signature so now um, I have gone through and cut apart and ink stained and dealt with kind of the pieces of um, ephemera from the kits. So I'm going to put right here, lest we skip anything, I'm going to just put right here a little clip of my, um, <laughs> I, I decided to turn on the camera and uh, do a little time lapse of me inking all of this stuff. So I'll put that right here. I drank some coffee and inked some things and I was watching some I've got some coffee now too I was watching some uh, YouTube videos while I did and um, oh by the way I think I've solved my shadowy issues see how much brighter it is here I did that too all right so especially since it's supposed to be gray and rainy for the next like several days so in addition to cutting apart the ephemera that's, that's all I've done is cut it apart and inked the edges of all the stuff that needed inking. I haven't done anything else to it. I also went though and rummaged through my napkin supply um, and found a couple of napkins that match this theme. Look how great those match with this. And then I found a couple of napkins that match this book and found some great napkins that match this book. Again, thank you to my friend Beth who sent me this amazing happy mail full of all these wonderful napkins. I have like 10,000 napkins to pick from. Um, because I'm thinking that we'll do some decoupage maybe onto some of the envelopes or things that um, I had pulled out to put in this book. So we'll see if we get to that today. But today what I want to kind of do is walk through my ephemera. So I'm going to put these signatures and these napkins out of the way and put them back over here. Then what I want to do is like I've got so each kit comes with a couple of envelopes. I want to make the envelopes up and then we've got these long um, there they can be tags or belly bands and there's five of them in each you know with the ephemera packs. So I think I want to make some long skinny um, like sacks, paper sacks for a few of them to go in. So we'll have those. And then I want to use my, um, my templates for library pockets. If you don't know about this book, if you don't know about the freebies, if you want these templates, check out the Facebook group below called Junk Journal Inspirations. And you will, um, you will, if you go on there, 
want to be a member, you know, you have to request membership, make sure you answer all three questions. There are three. Make sure you answer all three of them. If you have been declined, it's because you didn't answer all three. You have to agree to the rules. You have to agree to our thing about not selling and not being promotional and just being, you know, for inspiration and sharing your craft. So, but if you want these templates, you'll see us use them. And if you want them, that's where to find them. For today, I'm going to use those. I'm also, I've also printed off some additional pages from each kit. So I've got some of the, the bright ones, and then I've got some of the vintage ones. And I've printed these off so that we can use the templates with them to make some library pockets, but also we'll use them to make the, the paper sacks for these um, word cards, tags, I don't know, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and we'll make those in kind of the style that um, I did in my most recent video. But first, before we get to that, let's deal with, like, let's make the envelopes up. So these these cabinet cards cut apart look so cute. And they match this journal kit so well. Um, so yeah, I'm totally excited. These could be like tuck spots and things, right? I really like the way this one turned out. I don't know why. I think it's just cute. So those are in my shop if you want them. Uh, and then we've got some cards, tags. Oh, I realized as I was inking, the one thing that I didn't cut up for this was the doily sheet. So I'm going to have to find that and, and do that. But then I've got all the tags and everything cut up and inked. But we've got our two envelopes <clears throat> that we need to make up for each. So I'm going to move those aside. Now, I'm going to use my scoreboard. Oh my gosh, if I can free it from its hiding place. I'm going to use my scoreboard. You definitely don't have to. You could do this with a ruler. Um, you know, just line your ruler up along the edge of things and then fold up. But uh, I have a scoreboard, so I'm going to use it. But you do not by any means have, have to have one, right? <clears throat> and I've got some black lines. You can see here, right? Some black lines drawn. And those are... Um, for a couple reasons, they're at certain spots, three inches and eight inches. And then this is just beyond six inches. These are for like specific folding things that I do. But also it's so that I can follow the same line and line things up. So I just took a Sharpie and drew down one whole line because like here, you know, I've got this point and I can't line it up against the point. So, <clears throat> and I need to make this fold. So when I've got this black line, I can see on the top, it needs to be there, and then I need to see it on the bottom as well. So then I can line it up, you know, along there. It works great. So I'm just going to put creases in for the envelope for the side flaps here. And then I'm going to put one along the bottom flap. And one along the top flap. I am, I'm get quiet because I'm trying to line it up, but then also I get sometimes overzealous and just push down too hard. And that's, then I make little cracks in the paper and I don't want to do that. I'm going up just slightly on this flap, um, just slightly over, like, so here's where the edge of this is and here's where my line is. And I'm just lining this flap and this flap up with the line, with the groove next to my line. And that's just to leave a little excess there so there's not as much bulk. So I've got my lines in that one, right? Now I will go ahead and put the lines in the other ones and I'll fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me do it all. And I'll be right back. So 
so we've got our four envelopes. <clears throat> um, now, before we fold them up, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little bit of stenciling on the back. Um, you know, we don't have to do down all the way because once this is folded up, you know, you'll only see this part. But I thought it would be kind of fun. Just add a little bit of something. So I grabbed out a couple of stencils. Um, they're both kind of, you know, this one's flowers. So, <clears throat> and not going to lie, grab this one because it already had vintage uh, ink on it. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think I will use, I'm going to use my um, makeup brush to do this. And I am just going to kind of put it over the middle. And I don't need like a heavy stencil line. I just want the hint of it. I think it'll just add a little extra when you um, open the envelope. And I'm gonna try not to get right up to the edge because then you'll get this straight line and I don't want the straight line. So I just kind of go around. like so and look at that it just adds a nice little bit of extra bit of texture so when you open the envelope you know you'll see that and that's nice that gives it a little extra something like I say it's sometimes it's the small stuff that you go is it really worth my time doing this but I think sometimes that stuff is if you question it Sometimes you go, well, but how cool would it look? It's the little stuff like that that shows, you know, re you really took your time to do this. And it makes me happy. And if it makes me happy, then, you know, part of the mission is already accomplished because this should make us happy. It shouldn't make us stressed out. Okay, so there's that one. Then I'm not going to use my brush for this one because I'm using a blue. I decided to get out my Stormy Sky blue for this kit. Rarely do I use inks other than brown. So I was like, you know, I'm going to, but I have, I have some. So I'm just going to use my ink dauber guy and go over. Again, I'm not going to go right up to the edge because I don't want that hard line. There we go. That's cute. <clears throat> and now we'll do this one. Hope y'all are doing well. Like I said, it's been gray and rainy, but we so so needed the rain the moisture my brother-in-law is a firefighter um, in our volunteer fire department up here and we just were talking about how the other day there were two different wildfire calls in the same day and that was after a major fire call not that far away um just in another town where like i think five different five or six different departments. Now I'm just going to fold these up, guys. Five or six different departments had to respond. It was a pretty major fire. They, you know, burnt it burnt down a like a, a barn completely and then I think they were able to save the rest of the buildings on the farm, but boy, scary. <clears throat> so, we definitely need some moisture. You know what? This there's some ink here and I'm going to I've got a partially moist wipe from earlier that will be just enough to get this off but not leave it super juicy which is kind of nice so I folded up that envelope doesn't that look nice though when you open it there's this texture I like that but I'm gonna fold this back and go along this edge right here and then the other edges that I didn't get to ink I'll actually you know what I'll do that in a minute I'm gonna put all the folds in then I will do the inking that I didn't do. You, some of the inking you can't do on these until they're, you know, folded up. So, anyway, 
fires. It's fire season up here, but we had we had an early kind of spring here. We're having an earlier spring and they're just the snow melted a while ago because we've had some warm days and there just wasn't a, t a ton of snow. We had a very cold winter, but not a very snowy one. So that I did not do a very good job of cutting. That works. <laughs> So we haven't, the snow all melted and it's just been really dry and crunchy for a while now. And uh, we need this rain. So I, I don't mind, but it's just been, it rained all day yesterday. It's that, it's not even like a nice hard like thunderstorm rain. I love that. This is just drizzly, but I'll take it. Any moisture, stop those wildfires, stop the, the forest fires around here, stop burning down farmer's barns <clears throat> okay so now aren't those pretty okay now I'm gonna do the inking <clears throat> so I've got that but you can't ink any of around this until it's all folded and if you're new to my channel I'll tell you now inking is, is my jam. <laughs> I'm here for it. I want to ink it all. Ink it all. This blue looks really pretty. I'm, I'm liking the blue. And I gotta say guys, I'm really liking these new ink dabbers. Thank you, Jamie, for the suggestion. They do still chew up, but I like the way they lay the ink down. Okay, so that one is Stormy Sky that I'm using. And this, woo, and this one's just vintage photo. You know, ye old standby. But it has been nice out. You know, yesterday, so on Wednesdays here, there is, um, a, we still do release time. I'm curious, do you guys living in other parts of the country get to do this? It's in the cities, in the Twin Cities, we don't, We are, none of our schools ever did this. And it's getting harder and harder with the whole like separation of church and state thing. But <laughs> um, our school district still allows release time, which I think is a, a law, but it means that kids get to get out early from school one day a week for religious education, So, um, which is called release time. So our church works with another local church and sponsors or does do the release time. And now I teach it. I'm going to glue these things shut now glue them together. I got to get this little globby thing off here. Um, so that's on Wednesdays for us. And remember, you don't want to put glue on the whole flap because you'll go too high. <laughs> so I just don't glue that top part. And you can go close to this outside edge, but don't go too close to the, to the inside edge because then you'll glue your envelopes shut. <clears throat> Anyway, I was, so the, the, we do it at the other church, not our church, and it's literally a block and a half from my house. Um, so I just usually walk over there. And yesterday when I was walking over, it was just starting to rain and it was that, oh, that like intoxicating smell of sp spring rain where it is just the, the fresh, that fresh scent of spring rain. Oh my gosh, Pet petrichlor, right? Uh, the smell of, of the ground and everything getting, you know, just when it's just about to rain. And then when I came out, I needed to walk over to the post office to check our PO box, which I'm still getting, I'm better about checking it, uh, you know, at least a couple times a week, but <laughs> I'm so used to my whole life having mail delivered to our house that I still have to remember that there's no mail delivered here and I gotta go get it. Okay, that one's good. Um, so I was walking from the church, so then it's another like couple blocks over to the to the post office and 
the teeniest, tiniest, cutest little post office ever. Um, and my mom and I were walking together because she had to go check. She checks three P.O. boxes, one for church, one for, for her job, and one for their house. So we were walking over at night. I said, I just I have to say that the smell in the air right now is absolutely intoxicating. It was just fantastic. That one I folded a little weird, so I'm going to just put a little extra on that edge to hide that little white edge. And then I'm, you'll notice I'm always checking to make sure I didn't glue them shut because I have done that a time or two. So yeah, I, I love the smell of rain. I love a good thunderstorm. I don't even mind, you know, a rainy day or two because I stay inside and drink my coffee and look out the window at the rain. And, and there's something about the way the color of the sky when it's raining that makes the greens in the trees and everything just look a little more bright and green. I don't know. It's You would think that that sounds counterintuitive that the sun would make it look better. But honestly, right now the greens in the trees look nice. Plus, they really need the water. So there's that. Okay, so we've got our envelopes cute, cute seed and made up, right? So we, those are ready to go in to our journals at whenever. And then let's, let's make some bags for, oops, I totally did that wrong. See, this is why you should not do two journals at the same time, but you know what? <laughs> I am a glutton for punishment. All right. So I didn't print these borderless. So we have to take that into account as we do this. And we should make sure that we're making them wide enough <laughs> for our word sticks. So here's what I'm going to say. Let's use this as kind of our template, only we want to do the back side because we want to fold it. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, it does. Don't listen to me ramble. Okay. So I'm going to say... But I want to line it up on the bottom here and make sure I'm making straight folds. So if you're watching my junk journal A to Z series, you'll know that B is for bags. <laughs> and we just did that. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this over again this way. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of ease so it's a little a little wider than the tag just so it can slide in and out better. And I'm going to check that. Yeah, so I just gave it, right, a little bit of ease when I folded it so that it's just slightly wider than the tag so it can go in and out easy. Anyway, B is for bags, so we were just doing these over on that, that channel, or over on that video. Okay, so now I'm going to cut. I don't want to cut straight along the edge of this. I want to cut in a little bit like this far in. You know, this would be when a smart person would take out their paper trimmer. So let's do this. I'm going to fold all of them this way. I think we'll make three for the three for this journal and three for that journal. So I'm going to do these folds on on three of these. And then we'll cut them all at the same time for, you know, efficiency sake. OK, so I'm just using that to kind of get over. But then I'm making sure I'm lined up straight on the bottom because that'll mean my fold is not getting wonky. And then I'm going to do the same thing, fold it over a little bit and then give it a little ease and line it up along the bottom. All right, I'm going to do, um, like I said, I'm going to do a couple more so I won't make you 
sit and watch me do these folds over and over. So I'll speed this part up and I'll come back when we're going to paper cut. Okay. I've done the folds on all of these and then we want to just make the cuts and so I brought out my paper trimmer because I think it would be smarter to do this the smart way so um, the nice thing about this is I can see where my cutting edge is right there and I can then line it up so that this just comes um, past there a little bit and that will get me the cut I want. Let's see. I want to line it up and then I want to push this down. And we'll save these scraps. So there we go. That'll fold over in the back. Again, I'm going to put it in like this and I'm lining this fold up against the back side of my bar here. And then you can see that my cutting edge is past the end of this. Well, you can't really see that, can you? Because this bar is in the way. Anyway, the cutting edge is past the edge of my bag. So I'm going to lift it up, hold this down, and cut. Okay guys, we're back. I've got those cut. I'm gonna set these aside because we'll use these to make library pockets. And then I am going to, we'll do the next step here. So we've got them folded over like this, right? And now um, we wanna make the bottom flap. So in order to do that, we just fold the bottom up. like that. And then we're going to open it up and cut out these two spots, these two rectangles on the side. So following the fold all the way over to this and then I'm going to miter it in just slightly like that. Again, if you want better instruction on this or more instruction or different instruction on this, go check out my drink junk journaling A to Z. B is for bags because there's better instruction. So then when we fold it in, this folds up and there's not that, you know, extra space. I'm not worried about the little edge of the paper white strip there because this is the back side of the bag and this is the front side that you'll see. I will cut it off up here on top though, but I'm going to do the rest of these. I'll do one more with you. Let me make sure this is not, it doesn't matter which side, the, which way the pattern goes or something. I'll fold up the bottom. I, I'm giving it like a half inch to three quarters of an inch flap on the bottom. You can make the flap bigger or smaller. It's up to you. Now I'm going to Follow the fold across and miter that up and follow this fold across and miter it up. And there we go. Oops. And it folds up. All right, I'm going to do the rest of these and I will be back. got them all you know ready to be glued shut um, the only thing that I want to do is I'm gonna put a little thumb notch in the tops of them but I'm gonna cut this white well let me see how tall they are if I want them to stay that tall or if I want to cut them down a little more 
Okay, so right now the tag disappears. That's literally at the length of the tag. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut maybe like an inch off the top of each of these. Guys, my hands are feeling a little shaky today because last night, well, okay, so, you know, if you've been on my channel for a little while, you know that we just recently moved. Um, quite a big move. And, <laughs> and I hate moving. And somewhere in the move, the little peg thing that I need for my food processor is gone. And so I was starting some ferment, some fermented vegetables, some carrots and ginger, and some um, sauerkraut, homemade sauerkraut last night. And I couldn't find the thing to shred them with my food processor. So I had to do five pounds of carrots, three things of three little, what do you call them, of ginger? I'm forgetting the word right now. There's a word for it anyway. So three chunks, pieces, good size, thumbs. I think they're called thumbs actually, of ginger. <laughs> Three three good size multi thumbs of ginger, and I know someone of you brilliant people is gonna put it in the comments. And then two heads of cabbage, all by hand on my little box grater. Oh my gosh! So my my arms and hands are feeling a little jelloey this morning. I was up till eleven o'clock sh shredding vegetables because I had to take breaks. Okay, I'm gonna put a little thumb notch. So I'm doing it. You know, there's the bottom flap so I'm doing it in the top and I go about two-thirds of the way and then I just try to line up my edges to get it as close to middle-ish as I can and it just gives me a nice little thumb notch there so you can get the tag in and out and I just like the little look it gives it so anyway shredding shredding vegetables late last night and today so today is Thursday, but you won't see this for another couple of days, but today's Thursday and it's my husband's birthday. Um, happy birthday, Ade. He is uh, turning 49. We are, we are rapidly approaching 50, only he's approaching it way faster than me because he's several years older than me. <laughs> I like to remind him of that. We haven't, I don't think we've said that he's turning 49 at all today. Matter of fact, the girls and I have just reminded him how many times uh, that he's turning, that he's one, that he's only one year away from 50. But he takes it all in stride. <laughs> We're going out to dinner tonight at one of his favorite places. And then our Dairy Queen just opened up in Bemidji. It's one of the seasonal ones that you have to like walk up to on the outside. And it just opened. And he has a sweet spot for this one particular thing that they make there. Heaven help us if they ever stop making it. But <laughs> um, so we're going to go get him that and get some dinner. Okay, now we've got to glue them shut. So um, you glue this flaps together and then you glue this bottom flap up. So we'll do that. And I have my pencil here because what I like to usually do is make a little mark, just a tiny little mark. It doesn't have to be anything that you'll ever notice, but I make a mark right up next to there because then I know, just have kind of a general idea of how to not go past, to put glue past that, but right up to it. So I kind of just make a line eyeball a line and then like I say don't go too close to this edge either because you don't want glue to ooze out into your uh, into your bag because that will glue it shut I know because I've done it or if it doesn't glue it shut you go stick a tag in there and it glues the tag into it done that too Okay, there's our first cute little, look it, cute little bag. Okay, we're gonna glue the rest of these up.
Joy, our 13 year old, is a little bummed about the rain because she's doing track now. Again, if you've been hanging out with me for a little while, you know when we moved up here, she started doing volleyball and that was that's her jam. Volleyball is her jam. She's here for that. But then came winter sports and she usually in the cities, she did theater or I mean, excuse me, in the city, she did dance line. So at our last school, she did dance line. Well, the school here is way too small to have a dance line, much to her chagrin because she loved dance line. I loved going to the meets because it was as much of the most craziest, tackiest sequined outfits and loud thumping like club music. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Lizzie, Lizzie and I especially, so she'll say she misses the dance line because it was so fun. The meets were fun. But alas, no dance line here. So she was like, what am I going to do? So she joined basketball. And if you've been around, you've heard my wonderful stories about joy in basketball. <laughs> However, she ended the season really well and started scoring points and everything. So she's she likes being active. She likes sports. So that was uh, her thing. Now she's excited to do basketball next year. She'll be in high school. So she'll get to be kind of like automatically on JV. But she's excited because she actually enjoyed it and kind of got into it. So she would have never done that in the city. She would have just always been on dance line and wouldn't have ever known about basketball. Um, I keep checking them to make sure I'm not gluing anything shut. <laughs> but then came spring sports and she was like, well, oh, now what? So basketball, she was a little more sure of, but spring sports here, the options for her are softball or track. And she's definitely not like a sprinter. Not everybody is built to be a sprinter. She doesn't mind running at all. She's just not a sprinter. Um, and she's not really a racer in general. <clears throat> so we were like, well, she could do, you know, shot put and discus. You could do the, the, the field sports or you could do baseball or softball, excuse me. And she said, well, I don't know about softball because, and this is a direct quote from the Joy Joy. She said, it requires a mitt and coordination <laughs> like somehow, somehow those two things precluded her from softball because she didn't have a mitt and it requires coordination which she has <laughs> I just thought it was the, that was her funny assessment of the situation so she kind of pulled her friends and tried to figure out where they were going and waffled a little bit but now she's doing track so the rain is making her sad because that means they have to stay practicing inside, which just isn't nearly as fun because you compete in track and do the things outside unless you have some fancy school with like a big fancy indoor track and stuff. But we don't all most schools around here just have little tracks outside. So she's like, but I mean, it's not super bad. They get to go do they get to work out in the, they have a they have a fairly nice weight room here at the school so they get to go work out in there and do leg days and stuff and she said then when there's downtime there's a couple volleyballs and I get to work on my serve because again volleyball is her jam so it's all good but the rain is bumming Miss Joyful out because it is it's no fun to be in track when you have to run in the halls in school you just have to run around the hallways Okay, this is the last one. Then I am going to ink the edges of them. I feel like we haven't had a video where I could just kind of chat about my life for a while. Is that, isn't that right? I mean, I chatted with you face to face a couple days ago, but that was about specific things. I haven't had a video where I feel like I could just chat, catch you guys up on life. Okay, let's separate these out. I want to do the blue on those and the vintage photo on these. We should put together a poll and see 
how long do you think it will be before Nikki puts the wrong ink on the wrong thing because she shouldn't be doing two books at the same time. Let's start a poll for that. You guys let me know in the comments. How long do you think it'll be? How long do you think I can actually pull this off before I start screwing it up? I don't know. I don't think I can bet because it's my own channel, but I wouldn't give me very long. You see, I kind of just squeeze this together like this and that opens it up so I can do the front side. Most of the time I'd like to ink those before I glue them together, but here in this instance, it doesn't matter because I can just open it, prop it open like that. This is a good way to extend your digital kits by doing things like this. So, you know, you pay for a digital kit um, <clears throat> and you can get a lot more out of it than just the plain old, you know, print the pages and use them exactly the way they are because you can do things like this. You can print additional pages and make yourself pockets. Say, say you wanted a whole bunch of pockets and tuck spots for a journal and the kit didn't come with any. Like this one, I didn't put any like, you know, pockets that were specifically made to be pockets. I didn't put any in the kit, but you can make them out of extra pages of the kit and that way they match and it's all cohesive and it looks like it came that way. And you can use, if you're new to this, you can go over to that group and get these templates. And you can use these as well. We're gonna use them in just a second here. But this is a great way to extend your digital kits. Okay, so those are all ready to go. I'm not gonna put tags in them yet because they're still a little wet from the glue and I don't wanna warp the the tags, but those can go in the pile of ephemera that is done. Then these are my, you know, additional offcut pieces and the templates that I made for the group. There's a small library pocket and a large library pocket. So I figured that we could get um, a small one a small library pocket or part of the large library pocket out of these pages, but we'd be able to get both, both of the small ones. I don't think we can get both of the large pieces out of what we've got left here. So let's make a small library pocket and then we'll make a large one out of those. So I'll just show you how I do it and then, uh, then I'll do forward it, you know? So, Let's take this piece for instance, and this has this nice iris here, and then these up here. The nice thing about a library, like a template is, you can try to catch, you know, what it is that you want to catch what image by laying it over top. So I'm gonna go like here, and then I'm just gonna trace, I'm tracing with a pencil very lightly, just dark enough so that I can see my line okay and then I'm gonna do my I want to catch this blue part there so I'm gonna do my pocket piece up here now this paper is fairly dark so hopefully I'll be able to see these lines <laughs> Yeah, I think I can enough to cut it out. But the other nice thing about that is they're dark enough to hide the, the pencil too. So then you just, you know, cut out along the lines that you traced. There's the bottom of my pocket, and then here is the, the top. You know how um, pencil lead is, like graphite is kind of shiny in, if 
you move it in the right direction. So that's what's helping me be able to do this right now. I'm concentrating because I'm cutting. Okay. So we've got our two pieces of our little library pocket. And now on this, this one, it shows where you need to fold, right? So along the three edges. So I'm going to do those folds. I'm not going to worry about, well, actually, <laughs> this is how I should do it. And I, this is how I normally do it. I just put it up against this, flip it over and fold the edges over here. That way I get it Line it. Now this is going to be really hard for you to see because it's like white paper on white paper, but I line it up as best I can and then just fold the edges over. So like that. Then it's a perfect fit. And then there we go, we've got our cute little library pocket, right? So there's the actual pocket piece. And we've made a cute little piece of ephemera that will glue down to a page and extend our kit some more. Um, I'm gonna take my pencil and just erase this little bit of edge right there. And then I'm gonna glue these down. And again, like I said, you don't, and you don't even have to have the template to do this. Honestly, you could, if you know, most of you can probably figure out how to do this without one, just freehand cut it. I just like the template because it makes me feel a little more confident that I'm cutting straight lines <laughs> instead of just freehanding. So I'm going to um, make another one of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself permission to get rid of that, but I'm gonna keep this still, because this is enough that we can, you know, do some ripping and make some little clusters, some paper clusters later on. So I'm gonna keep those. And I'm going to make two more mini pockets for these two for this one. And then I'm gonna make three for the uh, bright colored one and I'll be back. Oh, before I go though, before I go, this page, I don't necessarily need to catch anything specific. So I'm just gonna go on the back and go um, along the trace here because then you won't see the lines at all on the front. And then I can cut right along the edges here and save this whole piece over here for cluster making later on. And I'll be able to see my lines better, so. That's all, carry on. library mini library pockets which of course I'm going to ink and then um, I think I will make a couple of big ones as well and uh, again this little thing you could definitely ink the edge of this before you put it on here but going back to how I like to make everything more difficult for myself you know in, not intentionally, but somehow uh, subconsciously I do. Uh, it's okay. 
it works to do that. So what I'm going to do is ink around these, finish inking around these. Then I am going to em employ the same technique. Look at that, guys. I'm talking and remembering to switch out ink. Now, that's impressive. <laughs> I just had to make note of that to, you know, bolster my myself a little here. Um, so I'm going to employ the same technique, your template, and um, make myself uh, at least two large library pockets um, so that we can put them into the, you know, into the books, into the signatures. So, hold on. Oh, come on now. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll fast forward through that as well because it's the same exact thing. It's the same template, only larger. So if you... If you have the template, I'm just using the larger of the two. If you don't have the template and you want it, like I said, Facebook group, link down below. Um, but I'm just gonna take the larger template and do the same thing and make a couple of large ones. I think I can only get one, yeah, I think I can only get one large one out of each one, but that's okay, cause like here, I'll get that butterfly on the pocket and I'll get some of that butterfly up on top and that, that'll look really cute. And then we'll just save the rest of these flowers part down here for tearing up in collage, right? <laughs> so I've got two, I've got two more sheets of the vintage and two more sheets of the um, like just extra sheets. So I'm gonna make myself some large library pockets out of those and then I'll be back. pockets and two larger ones so that's awesome that is some more ephemera to go in our journals okay now and we might do some decorating down on the fronts of them or they might just stay the way they are we'll see I'm going to put those all aside. So we've got our bags made, we've got those made, we've made our envelopes up. Next, um, you know, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it for today. So we've got these, right? And we've got our little bags and those might get some decoration on the front or maybe not, I'm not sure. And we made up our envelopes. Um, the tags that came with the kit, so there's large, medium, and small ooh, tags here. Um, I printed mine off on this um, kind of bluish gray parchment paper, so it's a little bit thicker cardstock. So I don't feel like I need to back these on to anything. They're fine the way that they are. That would just kind of bulk them up, I think. Um, and so I've got them inked and some of them like, you know, with the butterflies and stuff, I don't know that I want to put too much on them because I kind of like the way that they just already have stuff on them. Like this one has a butterfly and stuff. So those, we might just put some, you know, holes in the top and put some sari silk or some ribbon or something on those tags and they'll be good to tuck into things. Matter of fact, these smaller ones, yeah, they would fit down cute and then with a, maybe something a little bit bigger behind it. So that'll work for those. 
And then um, the larger library pockets, I bet they will fit these larger tags, only that's like way too tall for the back. I mean, which doesn't really matter. You know, you can do it however, but these medium sized tags will definitely fit in there. And then we could put something else in there too. So um, another thing is, is you know, if you're using these and you run out of tags, you can always print more. Plus we've got these large tickets that could fit inside of things as well. And we've got a couple journaling cards. These larger tags, especially like, not maybe not, I don't know. Look, the butterflies are so cute the way they are. And so is that one. This one we might do a little something too. But these might all stay this, this way too because I want to do some decoupage of, with those napkins and we can maybe make some more tags or journaling cards that way um, so that we'll have some additional things to put stuff into. So anyway, I feel like we got a lot accomplished today, right? Um, we got this and our envelopes done. So I will see you guys again really soon and we will just keep plowing our way through these books. We'll see how long I can do it. For those of you who threw your hats in the pool that I would mess up today by inking the wrong thing, you lose. See, I, I managed to pull it off for this whole video. Now that's not to say the next one, but won't be the, the, the end of that. But, but you lose if you threw your hat in for this one. And by the way, how little faith do you have? Just kidding. I would have bet against me too. So we'll see how long we run this co-current thing. Um, you know, but we'll see. It's working for right now. Anyway, I'll stop jabbering. I think I say that at the end of every video. Guys, thanks for hanging out with me for a little while today and working on our book. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is on your side of this globe, whatever side of it you live on. And until I see you next time, guys, stay safe and healthy. And I hope that you're able to go outside and take a deep breath of fresh air uh, in between your busy life. Um, appreciate the small moments, do a little crafting, stay creative. Uh, and until I see you guys next time, take care and God bless you. Bye-bye.